I have a lot of backpacks, but I don't have a rigid one like this one I'm drawing. I thought it would be useful to have a pack that could hold items and not have the sides of the pack collapse in on the items inside. I want to use PVC to build this frame, then fit it with fabric sides. The drawing is not exact yet, but it will give me a basic idea of the pipes and joints needed and the potential construction variations. See how I do this next. I've had some second thoughts on the design of the frame and now I have this design. The only thing missing from this drawing is the shoulder strap but I'll work on that when the time comes because my ideas on that are still not finalized yet. I know this drawing seems a bit confusing with all the colors but the legend to the right explains it well if you take each item one at a time. I've also decided on a simple idea for the compartment of the backpack. I decided to use a cardboard box. It's exactly what I want. Non-collapsible sides, easily repairable by replacing the old box with a new one, and water resistant if needed by spraying the outside with a coat of paint. It was just a matter of finding a size that would work well for a backpack and getting a set of boxes so I'll have extras. These are the parts I need to build my PVC backpack. The pipes have been cut approximately one half inch longer than the size of the box they correspond to. I avoided making the PVC frame a perfect fit for the box for ease of assembly. The box will rattle within the frame once assembled, but I'll make up for that with some kind of padding. As you've seen in the sketches, there are modified joints I'll be making for this build. The one you see me working on here is a T being reamed straight through the two sided section. This allows me to pass a pipe straight through without cutting the pipe into two pieces. The second modified joint shown on the sketch is the snap-on. This joint makes it possible to add and remove sections of PVC without having to disassemble anything already built. When creating snap-on joints, it's a good idea to ream them first, then cut the slot. The reaming helps the inner surface of the snap-on sit more flush against the PVC pipe when attached, preventing the joint from rocking. I'll start with assembly of the front and rear sections of the frame. A side note for this section's assembly, remember to include the vertical bars that are held in place by the reamed joints. On the front section of the frame, the vertical bars serve as an enclosure to keep the box in place. On the rear section of the frame, be sure to include two reamed tees on each vertical bar. These tees will provide a connection for the pipes that will serve as the shoulder straps. By getting the front and rear sections assembled and all adjacent sides level and flat when resting on a flat surface, it'll be easy to get the rest of the backpack's assembly square and uniform. Also, I'm using half inch long number 6 flathead screws to secure the pipe to the joints. Because the backpack could possibly hold a lot of weight, I'm using two screws per connection screwed in on opposite sides of each other. I'm going to demonstrate combining the individual sides I just built into the full front and back sections. If everything is cut at least close to the correct length, the pieces should come together with not too much effort. Some of the pipes were a little tough to insert into the joint, but fixing that is just a matter of hammering the pipes completely into the joints they were just inserted into. If they are not bottomed out in the joint, alignment of the other sections will be off. Something else I'd like to mention is that the drawing was done in draft form with no measurements. I found that instead of three snap-on tees on the bottom, I can only fit two. Luckily, that miscalculation in the drawing won't cause any serious problems. One thing I mentioned earlier that I still missed are these tees that go on the vertical posts on the rear section of the frame. They'll be used in the assembly of the shoulder straps. If you forget to put these on, you'll have to disassemble quite a bit of the frame to get them on, so don't do what I just did and forget about them. Luckily, I caught this sooner rather than later and only need to disassemble the vertical post. Now that I have the front and rear of the frame completed, I can combine those two sections using the snap-ons. Assembling the frame using the snap-ons is easy but may require a hammer. Place either the front or back section of the frame flat on the ground or a tabletop. Attach two snap-ons on each edge of the frame except for the edge that will be the top of the backpack. 
attach the other side of the frame onto each of the snap-ons. For the size of frame I built, the two 10 foot lengths of PVC pipe I picked up from the hardware store was short by a lot, so I picked up another 10 foot length of PVC pipe. This would also include the pipe needed for the shoulder strap, which I also forgot to include in the total amount of PVC pipe needed. Finally, two screws per snap-on should hold everything together. One thing I'd like to mention about the screws is that some of them seem to strip the hole they were being screwed into. So what I may do later is replace the number 6 half inch flathead screws with number 8 half inch flathead screws. I think a lot of the problem has to do with countersinking the hole. It might have been better to not countersink the hole and just use panhead screws instead. This would have given the screw more plastic to grab onto. Something to think about if you attempt this project. These parts are for the assembly of the shoulder strap. Instead of using a soft flexible strap made of fabric, I want to stick with the PVC theme. I'll most likely pad it in some way for comfort, but I've not yet decided on what to use. One important measurement on the shoulder strap is the length of the short piece that rests on the shoulder. For my shoulder, I stood with my back against the wall and measured one inch past the front of my shoulder. In tests, that felt like a comfortable fit to go with. Assembly is really simple as you can see here. Once all the pieces are assembled, hammer the joints down to be sure the PVC pipe is inserted into the joint until it bottoms out. In this clip, I did try to level the shoulder strap on the flat surface of the table, but found in test fittings that the shoulder strap can't be flat. By offsetting the bottom from the top, it allows for the straps to be wider at the bottom to fit around my waist, but still be narrow at the top where it only has to fit around my neck. For the amount of offset, I didn't measure anything. I kinda guessed at what might be needed and ended up with what you see here in this clip. When mounting the shoulder straps, hammer them into place to be sure they're bottomed out in the joint. Also, double check the offset between the left and right side of the shoulder strap to be sure they are equally offset relative to the backpack and each other. When I'm sure both shoulder straps are mounted correctly, screw all of the connections in place using two screws per connection. The screws add strength but will also prevent the offset from straightening out on its own over time. At this point, the backpack frame is done. The shoulder straps move easily and smoothly. They're not stuck from the tees not being reamed out enough. A test fit feels like the shoulder straps fit nicely on my shoulder and around my torso. With no weight in it, it feels fine. Nothing's jabbing me in the sides or back. The one drawback is the shoulder strap is not flexible, so getting my arms into them requires a little flexibility from the wearer. As mentioned earlier in this video, I'm using a cardboard box for the compartment of the backpack. The first thing I want to do is glue it shut, so I'll have a completely sealed compartment. I'm using Elmer's glue since it works fine for gluing paper, and I'm trying to keep this project on a budget as much as possible. I'll let the glue set for 24 hours. 24 hours has passed and the Elmer's glue should be sufficiently dried. The glue's hold on the flaps seems to be strong enough to keep the box from unfolding open. It looks like I can move on to the next step of prepping this box for use. The next step involves cutting an opening in the side of the box that will become the top of the backpack compartment. There are many ways to cut this opening in the top depending on what your purpose for the backpack will be. For me, I'll just cut close to the top edge of three sides, leaving one side to serve as a hinge for the cover. I decided on this style of opening because I don't really have a specific plan on how I'll use the backpack. I think through trial and error, I'll see if this cover design will work for me or if I need to redesign. The last thing I need to do to finish up this backpack is to paint the compartment to help give the cardboard some water resistance and durability. I think one coat should be enough. I'm not worried about the durability of the paint job. It's more that I want the compartment to have something like a raincoat all around its outside to protect it from mild weather conditions that would normally wreak havoc on bare cardboard. I'm trying to find that balance between doing just enough versus too much for the sake of a low budget project. Once the paint dries, I'll be done. This is more a proof of concept project. Keep in mind this backpack is reconfigurable. 
It's not quite snap it together and go, but you can replace pipes with longer ones to make a larger backpack with a larger carrying capacity. For myself, I plan to make this backpack slightly wider because I want the ability to pick up large items like VCRs on my e-bike rather than needing my car, especially since the distances I travel usually are not more than a mile away. My use of this backpack will be infrequent, but I know there will be times when I need it and I'll be glad that I can use it in conjunction with my e-bike rather than driving. Maybe you can find the perfect size rigid backpack for your carrying needs. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.